everybody, this is Chloe Hudson with World Peace Projects. Thank you for joining me. So today I wanted to chat a bit about resistance and sabotage programs, interference and the like. I have been dealing with this for a very long time. <laughs> Part of the reason that I have so much difficulty getting out consistent videos to you guys, the resistance energy around me just sitting down to record is amazing. So I wanted to bring up this topic since I, I was all gung-ho, which is usually what happens. Super gung-ho, got my ideas, got ready, and then literally sit down to do it and just diversion. So because of that, I figured <laughs> what would help me fight that interference today was to do a video on the actual interference. And I think this is something that a lot of us deal with. And I also perceive this as an experience or an infiltration, if it is in fact an infiltration, to be uh, easily uh, unnoticed in regard to it being some kind of alternative, external, synthetic force that is pushing you to delay or detour or whatever is happening. Now, obviously, we can just be lazy or we can have a lot of a difficulty approaching something. Oftentimes, things get put on a delay because of overwhelm. I know that's something that I experience. So I often can get overwhelm, overwhelmed with the amount of work or something that I have to do. And therefore, because of the perception, this is subconscious, mind you, because of the perception of what needs to be done and the totality of what all that requires, I don't even start. And so that's something that's important to notice about oneself. Though, in addition to all of these things, you know, it can be accentuated with sabotage interference energy. Now, it's important to understand if you're experiencing sabotage, distractor programs, backup programs, triggers, patterns around this type of thing. And when they come up, for example, like I said, I'm good, I'm clear until I literally sit down. All I have to do is click on the button. And before I click, that's when the difficulty or the resistance comes in. And for me, it's very strong impetus. And it's extra strong because I do have the propensity to delay or put things off. Um, I'm not super driven by, by money like a lot of people. So therefore my impetus around that isn't as strong as many who are really good at just pushing through that regardless. So it's good to note your energetics, but it's also important if you perceive that you may be experiencing some kind of this sabotage energy or resistance energy prevention. There's a lot of flavors of this, right? Because sabotage energy can come in a lot of different packages. Sabotage could be that you're going strong and you're doing really well, and then something comes in to redirect that focus or you get overly passionate and you say something that just botches the whole job or relationship or what have you. And that's a bit different than that distraction energetics where no matter how hard you try or how much thought and energy you put towards something, it just doesn't get finished or completed. This type of disassociation, you know, squirrel. <laughs> your attention veers away or a million things start happening or noises, especially if you're recording, that's a very calm bit, right? So some signature frequencies of this for me is first of all, I'm aware that the, the programming around the interference, it, it really activates when I'm about to take initiative and action. So for me, the most potent point of redirect when I experience this is when I'm actually moving towards that target, I'm already in motion. And then there's this curve, this sidebar, right? Uh, another thing I notice is in addition to that, when my tech is right in front of me, it makes it that much stronger, right? So for me, that tells me that there's this, this 
emission of energetics that is being accentuated through my technology and possibly the specific programs I use to offer up these videos and this type of thing. Now, <clears throat> I'm aware that that's happening because, for example, you know, some of the, and I'll, I'll add it on the screen here so I don't get filtered, these types of softwares edit me and filter the classes I may be doing live in real time, right? So we're all aware of, of this heinous filtration that's coming in and getting that much more um, uh, insidious. So it's not a difficult thing for me to validate that that's happening through these types of programs and softwares and what have you. So let's say that you pinpoint and hone in on some of these distractor resistance programs, whatever the specific unique flavor or, or signature is that is affecting you or you're experiencing. Or perhaps you can start to think about that this is something that somebody that maybe you're depending on and needing to be accountable is experiencing if they're consistently on this weird roll and then there's just this drop they get back up there's this drop maybe you know get a bit more objective and perceive while all of our experiences you know ultimately how we're going to engage with them and, and navigate them it's our responsibility though it may assist you to not feel so irritated or frustrated that that's something that can definitely be happening now it's really easy to go into victim state around this right because <laughs> it, it it you know at first blush it's like forces outside of our conscious intention are imposing to um, divert us and that feels violating. And that may be a part of your process that you need to go through, though it's really important to understand that while the initial directive of that program is ultimately and obviously to, to uh, in, you know, emphasize the uh, shutdown of you accomplishing this goal, right? There's also going to be backup cushions, backup programs to it. And to further proliferate that you may not ever accomplish these goals or you will always have difficulty, will implement through engaging your emotional state. So if you don't get things done, and you start to spiral into this victim blaming state. Now, a couple of things with that. It's obvious that if, if we get into this downtrodden, upset energy and victimized energy, immediately our frequency plummets. It's already more difficult to accomplish things, to feel inspired, to get them done, to be supercharged around it. So that one is, is obvious regardless if this is just, you know, your normal propensity right now because you're going through some stuff or if there's external implementation that you're also experiencing to this. Though, in addition, look at the anatomy and the understanding of those types of emotional responses. So if, if we go into a blaming state around this, one, you're already owning that that's your fault. You're saying, I am fully responsible. I take full ownership of all of the energies and the experience that's within my bubble or my sphere. And therefore it's completely my fault, my bad, that I didn't accomplish this goal. So there's a big difference, even though it can look subtle initially, between you taking responsibility for what it is you need to accomplish regardless of the factors in your environment or the situation or your your feelings you know it, often we we go to the job we we got to get something done and it needs to get done regardless of how we feel and a very obvious <laughs> experience of this is anybody who's a parent i don't care if you're a parent to a, a bipedal upright human or a fur baby often it's quite obvious that you have to put your feelings aside and take care and do what's best for your child so 
parents have often learned this, you know, really quickly, and it's just something that it teaches you compartmentalization. So there is that place where regardless of what's going on, you're still going to have to navigate this territory. Though if you move into the blaming mode, first of all, you're, you're owning and accepting, you're contracting and agreeing to the energies and the frequencies and the programs and the, the infiltration, whatever you want to call it, and the myriad of ways it comes in. You're saying that that's me. I own it. So therefore, it offers those programs the ability to embed even further, right? Because now you've said you're allowed to be here. Even if you're not conscious of what all is in your environment or you're experiencing internally or however it's showing up, you're taking ownership of it. So therefore, even if this is by default, you're allowing it to be present. Okay, so the next step with that blaming energetics is that, okay, now I've owned this energetics, you know, most likely subconsciously and by default, but in, a diff, in, in addition, I'm going to proliferate that heavy energy in my field. I'm going to propel it forward into my near future, as well as currently what I'm experiencing in the present. So it starts to compound. And it begins to create a very miresome, difficult territory for you to navigate, not just in this moment, but in the near future and possibly, you know, in the latter future. So understand that that blaming, you know, guilt, shame, whatever flavor of that range of frequency emotions that you want to utilize or you just move into because you've got a pattern and a propensity to berate yourself supports the sabotage, right? And it starts to install those neural pathways even deeper that next time you approach, you know, even if you're coming in from another direction, where you've got your plan, you've got your solution, that that pattern is still there. So inevitably, you're going to have to face off with it, right? And it makes it that much easier to project, kind of like predictive programming, that next time you do approach, you'll come in contact or engage with the same sabotage, resistance, distractor energy. So I want to bring this to light because I know a lot of people deal with this. I absolutely deal with this. And we have to be savvy to it because it's so easy, especially if you're somebody that really likes to do a good job. You know, this is common where you want it to be so perfect or in, in a specific way that is, it's it often isn't realistic, but even if it's not realistic, that's highly time consuming and not really necessary. That you know, there's just this delay, delay to even just get it done, get it out there. And so that can add on to the trouble and the, the strife around it. And then once you get into that negative mindset around it or upset, then the energy just plummets. And depending on your field of work, like for me, I have to show up for you guys in a way that, you know, it's inviting, right? And on the topics we talk about, there's a very specific energetics that often has to be maintained around it. So if my emotional state's off kilter, it's quite obvious because all of you guys are conscious and intuitive, right? And I don't care to present that way. Though some, you know, careers or ways we show up doesn't matter. We can be in that bad mood. It doesn't matter because the work maybe is more linear or it's more um, just obvious, direct, what have you. So, identify the energies or the experiences that come in to create or promote this distraction resistance energy and take note of a lot of different things that maybe you haven't noticed about it. For example, when exactly do you notice you experience it? What were you doing? Where were you? Who were you engaging with? What tech were you using? What were you uh, thinking about? What were you about to implement? And does it happen every time when you have that very same scenario, right? Notice when the energy 
abruptly shifts because often if there's infiltration, it's a really quick palpable shift once you pay attention. Some can be sneaky and just slide right in, especially if they've been really long standing programs. And then in order to get in the power seat, be very strategic and careful with the way in which you engage with the energy, especially if that program temporarily worked. So you get distracted, you sabotage, you're prevented. So there's the rollout, the aftermath. What are you going to do now, right? Because that moment is where you have the responsibility to either completely lose your PowerPoint or to rebuild and notice. Because also at that moment is when the program or the frequency is most exposed, right? Often it's like, Kind of reminds me of that game, what was it called, where the gophers come out of the hole and you pop them with the, <laughs> the stick. It's kind of a horrible game. But uh, it's like the program pops up like this gopher and it works, right? And you get you get knocked off, off your, your platform or whatever you were trying to do. But at the same time, the gopher is also revealed. Though if you're in some kind of disillusionment about the blame or the upset or, or what have you, you're not going to see the gophers exposed because you're now shrouded like Linus in the dirt and the muck in the, the negative baggage energy around it. So these programs can absolutely be extracted, dissolved, reverse engineered. You can, you can completely take them offline, but it's important for you to recognize when they come in so that you can follow that back to the root to see how it integrated, right? And if these types of understandings are something that you would like to more further develop, please feel free to go to worldpeaceprojects.global. I offer several different courses on topics like these, also dozens of classes. There's bundle packages. If you're interested in coaching, I have that available as well, including one-on-one -on -one comprehensive sessions, worldpeaceprojects.global. And once you start to see these types of things, it becomes quite obvious. And then your challenge may be to neutralize your emotional energetic charge around it, right? So here's a example of how you can call in support from the outside. I would hope that a lot of you guys wished that I offered more content more consistently. <laughs> So therefore, I'm going to extend a request to you so you can pay it forward to me that when you have that thought or you're wishing I had new content, something fresh, you know, or that we could engage in through this platform, that you put out that positive vibe to me and you say, hey, Chloe, I know you can do it. I'm so excited for the new video you're uploading right now. Send me the energetic support through positivity to help me overcome and bypass any of these types of patterns and triggers and programs. And that is a wonderful way that you guys can assist me. And you can also make those requests of others or implement things in your environment that help give you that boost. For example, sticky notes, right? Let's say you know you're, you, you have a propensity to sabotage around a specific topic or something, or maybe a few things, then be strategic of how you place these reminders about why you might be having this resistance in the first place, and then offer yourself that optimistic energetic support to navigate through it, right? So I hope that this has assisted you. Once you acknowledge and find how these programs have come into being, then you can work to shore up or seal the openings in your emotional body, your energetic field, whatever vulnerability they've been able to come in and access you through, you can help clean that up and fortify your energetic protections so that they can't get in as easily. And when they effort, it's really obvious.
So then you can work to neutralize the energy and move past it. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. And if you enjoyed this video, please help me by giving me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.